Hello everyone, I am Seema Gupta working as assistant professor in Ramesh Institute of Vocational and Technical Education, Greater Noida. I am going here going to discuss the pathophysiology subject BP code 204T. Here I am going to discuss with you the unit 2. We have already discussed the different diseases related to the heart that is the uh, congestive heart failure and the hypertension. The next disease of the heart is the ischemic heart disease and in ischemic heart disease we will discuss the angina topic today. Now, the content which are there uh, for the today's topic is the first of all we will discuss the definition, then about the pathophysiology, manifestations, types of angina, the risk factors, sign and symptoms, diagnosis and management. So, first of all definition. See, we are here discussing about ischemic heart disease. So, first of all we have to deal what is ischemia. So, ischemia is it is a condition where vascular supply to the heart is impeded by atheroma thrombosis of coronary artery. What does this mean? Vascular supply means the blood supply to the heart is impeded means it is decreased. The blood supply to the heart is decreased. Why it is decreased? Due to, depos due to atheroma. What is atheroma? It is the lipid deposition. Okay. It is the lipid deposition. Where there is lipid de deposition? In the blood vessels or thrombosis clot formation of the coronary artery lead to ischemia. Coronary artery, what is coronary artery? The coronary artery is that artery which supply blood to the heart itself. So, suppose this is the coronary artery, it is supplying the blood to the heart. So, if there is a atheroma, atheroma or a lipid deposition over here or there is accumulation of clot over here. So, what happen? The blood flow is decreases see normal blood vessel suppose this is the normal blood vessel the blood flow is normal over here okay the blood is normally flowing over here but here what will happen due to the this is uh, suppose this is the clot deposition over here in the blood vessel so what happened due to clot deposition there is less of the blood is flowing here when there is less of the blood flowing blood is carrying oxygen so oxygen will be also less so, this coronary artery it is supplying blood to the heart. So, when coronary artery have less of oxygen, so what happen? It will lead to ischemic heart disease, ischemia that is decreased in the oxygen level to the portion to the coronary artery or the different branches of the coronary artery. Now, the pathophysiology that why these ischemic heart disease uh, is occurring, ischemic heart disease pathophysiology number one, uh, see pathophysiology you understand the term pathophysiology, patho means the disease, how the disease is affecting the functions of the body. The number one reason is atherosclerosis, what is atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis it is narrowing narrowing and stiffening means it is basically narrowing yeah it is called hardening of the arteries hardening of arteries hardening or stiffening of the arteries okay so atherosclerosis you will deal in detail why the atherosclerosis is there narrowing of the arteries is there due to hyper cholesterolemia, hypercholesterolemia that is the increase in the hyper word is increase cholesterol, mia means blood, increase in the cholesterol level in the blood and that cholesterol level is also specifically LDL that is the low density lipoproteins. 
injury in the lining of the core when there is a high cholesterol level in the arteries uh, in the blood vessels what happen they will injure the coronary artery the coronary artery when injured when there is injury in the lining of coronary artery what will happen there is migration of wbc to the site of injury see you know whenever there is any injury anywhere there is injury the wbc's migrates over there so when there is injury in the coronary artery there is migration of wbc's to the site of injury so after that what happens there is proliferation of the smooth muscle cell proliferation means dividing the smooth muscle cell will continuously divide okay when they will continuously divide what will happen there is narrowing of the blood vessel finally they will lead to ischemia see suppose here i am explaining you this is the blood vessel here the blood vessel is there and in this blood vessel there is deposition of the cholesterol over there when the cholesterol is deposition over there the wbc's will also migrate over here and what will happen the smooth muscle cell will finally proliferate finally this blood vessel is occluded okay there is narrowing of this blood vessel and finally what will happen it will ultimately lead to the ischemia or decrease in the oxygen supply okay here it is explained uh, clearly through this diagram see th this is the normal blood vessel normal blood vessel no accumulation is there here what is happen due to endothelial dysfunction it is very important why this is happening uh, this endothelial you know the blood vessels the inner layer is endothelium that endothelium layer it secrete nitric oxide endothelial layer it secrete nitric oxide and this nitric oxide is a vasoprotective it is anti thrombotic it does not allow the accumulation of the clot but when the endothelial cells they are not functioning properly what will happen there is more and more accumulation of the fats fatty streak the cholesterol deposition you are seeing then there is increase suddenly there is increase in the this clot and finally what will happen there is in this diagram it is shown there is a rupture of this plaque and this will finally leads to the disease called angina okay so ischemic heart disease the basically we are dealing here with angina so uh, this how this continuously the clot they are increasing the clot increasing in the size and finally there is uh, erosion and finally it's leading to the uh, angina now pathophysiology non atherosclerotic causes non atherosclerotic causes means the causes which are not related to atherosclerosis what are the other causes vasospasm continuous constriction of the blood vessels when there is continuous constriction of the blood vessels what will happen the blood flow will decrease and blood flow will decrease so the less of the oxygen will be there leading to the ischemic heart disease angina then embolism is there Embo, embolism what is embolism embolism it is the moving clot okay moving clot so embolism is there embo it basically see like suppose this is the blood vessel okay so here there is a clot this is called thrombus thrombus this is thrombus thrombus it is basically the stationary clot now here there are different suppose branches of the blood vessels these are the different branches if suppose this clot is moving this clot is moving so what will happen when this clot is move here it will continuously obstruct this blood vessel this moving clot is known as embolism if the clot it moves and if it it moves to the different branches that branch will small so it will lead to occlusion of that particular branch 
Then thrombotic diseases, thrombotic diseases like uh, sickle cell anemia, if a patient is suffering from sickle cell anemia, uh, it may lead to ischemic heart disease uh, angina. Trauma, trauma any injury, any injury may also lead to the development of ischemic heart disease. Then compression, compression how the compression if a, there is any tumor like this is the blood vessel and associated here if there is a tumor ok. So, this tumor will compress this blood vessel, this tumor will compress this blood vessel, the blood vessel will be compressed due to tumor outside. So, when the blood vessel will be compressed what will happen? The blood flow will decreased. When blood flow will decrease there is less of the oxygen supplied there and finally, it will lead to the coronary uh, sorry ischemic heart disease. Stenosis of the coronary artery, stenosis I have already discussed the narrowing, narrowing narrowing of the coronary artery may sometimes happen and it may results into the ischemic heart disease. Arteritis that is inflammation of the arteries, inflammation of the arteries may definitely lead to the ischemic heart disease. The next is the, so here ischemic heart disease angina is one of the ischemic heart disease that we are discussing today. So, what is angina? It angina it occurs when the cardiac workload increases. So, the myocardial oxygen demand exceed, but the coronary artery do not supply adequate amount of oxygenated blood to the myocardium because of the narrowing of the coronary artery. See understand what actually the angina is. The coronary artery there is deposition of the cholesterol when there is deposition of the cholesterol, the blood is not, the heart is not able to get sufficient blood. When the heart is not able to get sufficient blood, it will not able to pump properly. So, the demand of the body is more and the supply is less, supply of the blood is less. So, that ultimately leads to angina. It occurs cardiac workload increases, cardiac workload increases, but the oxygen is less ok, you understand. So, that is result into angina. Narrowing usually results from atherosclerosis, why the narrowing of the coronary artery due to deposition of the uh, cholesterol ok, but may results from coronary spasm ok, coronary spasm is also a reason. Now, coming to the manifestations uh, like ischemic heart disease, uh, what are the different manifestations that occurs? Uh, see ischemic heart disease may lead to angina pectoris that we are discussing, then acute myocardial infarction that the myocardial portion of the heart, the muscle portion of the heart, there is infarction means dead tissue, why dead? Because oxygen is not supplied there chronic ischemic heart disease, chronic means for a very longer duration there is ischemia, less supply of oxygen and may lead to sudden cardiac death. So, all these if a patient is suffering from ischemic heart disease, the he may suffer from angina, he may suffer from myocardial infarction, he may suffer from ischemic heart disease other and ultimately it will lead to sudden cardiac death. Now, coming here to angina pectoris basically what actually is angina pectoris. See angina I have told you that the demand of the uh, body is increased that is the uh, heart is uh, what happened the when the cholesterol deposition is over there. So, the proper blood supply into the coronary artery is less. So, what happened there is a sudden pain in the chest portion. Okay. So, that is called the angina, this is the tightness of the chest, why big tightness of the chest? Sufficient oxygen is not supplied, okay. coronary arteries they are narrowed or they are blocked, the pain is started in the center of the chest or on the left side of the front of the chest 
and ultimately it leads to angina. Now, the different types of angina are there, there are three types of angina, number one is the stable angina, number two is unstable angina, then is the variant angina. Now, first of all stable angina, see stable angina means the angina or the pain is occurring only during exercise. See normally if a patient is uh, suppose he is running, now when he is running what happens there is increase in the demand, oxygen demand it increases when you run very fast. So, blood vessels they dilate in the normal patient. But in a angina patient what happens because in the blood vessels in the coronary artery there is already deposition of clot, deposition of cholesterol is already there. So, what happens this because of the deposition of the cholesterol the uh, what happened the blood supply to the coronary artery is less and when suddenly you do exercise or there is any emotional stress what happen the oxygen demand it increases but oxygen demand increases the supply is not properly because of the deposition of fats. So, that leads to stable angina, but it uh, subside when you relax or when you lie down. So, that with what called is stable angina, means stable angina generally occurs when a patient is doing very heavy physical exercise. Okay. Unstable angina it has nothing to do with the uh, exercise or all it can occur at rest also. Why it is occurring? It is occurring due to rupture of the atheromatous plaque. The plaque which is there, there is deposition, there is clot formation there, it ruptures and when it ruptures, it attracts the platelets over there and finally, it blocks the full coronary artery. Other is the third type of angina is the variant angina. The variant angina it is mainly due to sudden vasospasm of the coronary artery. The coronary artery there is sudden constriction in the coronary artery okay. due to the release of certain mediators uh, certain uh, thromboxane and all they are released and they causes certain vasospasm constriction of the blood vessel and that finally, uh, may lead to the angina. So, these are the different three types of angina that we have discussed. Now, coming to the risk factors, risk factors what may lead to angina, what may lead to that sudden pain or tightness in the chest. So, number one is the high blood pressure, if a patient see all these diseases they are related, patient is suffering from hypertension may lead to heart failure, may lead to ischemia, atherosclerosis, myocardial infarction all these are related diseases. If one occurs, the whole chain it goes. So, risk factors blood pressure, high blood pressure, diabetes, patient is suffering from diabetes, they are having a poor cholesterol profile. Poor cholesterol profile that means there is increase in the LDL level and decrease in the HDL level. In diabetes also this happens. Increase in the LDL means low LDL is low density lipoprotein. This is actually your bad cholesterol and this is your good cholesterol. So, generally in diabetes what happens there is increase in the HDL increase in the LDL level is there and decrease in the HDL level is there. So, patient is suffering from a such cholesterol profile. See bad cholesterol means if there is increase in the LDL level, it will ultimately causes deposition and ultimately may lead to angina. But when there is decrease in the uh, uh, H, uh, here the diabetes there decrease HDL. HDL is a high density lipoprotein, it is a good cholesterol. So, the HDL level should increase because HDL what happens when there is increase HDL level, it will erode out the LDL. So, in diabetes the opposite happens, the LDL increases and HDL decreases. The other is the smoking, smoking also if these parameters are there. 
low fitness, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, obviously these parameters they lead to the deposition of cholesterol in the body ultimately may lead to angina. High salt intake, this may lead to hypertension, excess of the sodium, excess of alcohol use may also lead to angina. Now, what are the various signs and symptoms that are associated with angina? Anxiety, ek ghabrahat jaise hoti hai patient ko wo ho jati hai. Then breathlessness, saans lene mein dikkat hoti hai, breathlessness. Then there is sudden, sudden uh, type of uh, tightening or gripping in the chest because of the deficiency of oxygen supply over there. And that pain which occurs in the chest, it may radiate into your arms, into your jaws, teeth, ears and stomach. So, these are the different uh, areas where the pain it radiates. Then coming here to the next is sign and symptoms is dizziness. Ghoomna, sar ghoomna, hai? Heavy pressing sensation on the chest, then increased shortness of the breath on exercise. When you do exercise, this is basically in a stable angina. Palpitation, palpitation is increase in the heart rate. Heart rate, it increases so much high that uh, you hear a ringing sound in the ear. Kaan se gun 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 sunai deta hai, hai? Sweating. Pasinana, increase in the sweat. These are the certain signs and symptoms that are associated with the angina. Now, diagnosis, how you will diagnose uh, this particular uh, patient is suffering from angina? First of all, you will see the ECG. If a ECG, ECG, what is ECG? You have uh, studied in the HAP, it is electrocardiogram. You have normal waves in the ECG. Normal ECG, you have seen, this is the normal ECG, this is P, Q, R, S, T. This is, this is the normal. Okay. If a patient is suffering from angina, there is abnormal ECG, may be abnormal like, what happened? This, the T wave may be inverted. Okay. Or ST wave, this is ST wave something else is there. So, if a normal ECG, this is the normal ECG, if there is any variance from this normal ECG, the patient is suffering from angina. Stress testing is there, stress testing, how the stress testing? The patient is allowed to uh, move on the treadmill is there for a particular duration of time and uh, then it is seen that whether the pain occurs or all. So, accordingly the stress testing is done. Angiography, angiography, the diagnostic test to see at which portion of the coronary artery there is the occlusion. So, angiography is a diagnostic test to see at which portion there is uh, the occlusion. So, now coming to the treatment, the non-pharmacological treatment, non-pharmacological treatment uh, how? Uh, without the drugs, how? You have to stop smoking, limit the alcohol intake, you have to limit to the minimum, lose weight, you have to decrease your weight, increase the physical activity, but to a certain limitation. Okay. Then limit the intake of food rich in fat and cholesterol, specifically you have to decrease your LDL, you have to increase your HDL. So, limit the intake of fat that means you have to increase your HDL level. Control stress because uh, the various uh, neurotransmitters they are released when you are stressed. So, you have to re, uh, use certain relaxation techniques, certain meditation techniques you have to use there. Then control other core disorders such as diabetes you have to control, hypertension if a patient is suffering that you have to control. This is the non-pharmacological. Then finally, the pharmacological management, how you can manage this disease. Here, A, B, C, D, Menomics, I have given. A is for aspirin, you have to give. Aspirin, it is a antiplatelet drug. It break down the plat, uh, break down the clot that is deposited. 
then beta blockers why you have to give uh, b for beta blockers why you have to give beta blockers because beta blockers they will lower down the blood pressure because of the hypertension the patient is uh, having this angina then c is the cigarette smoking you have to avoid the cigarette smoking at all and uh, because that may ultimately va causes variance in the cholesterol level specifically the ldl level may increase there then diet and diabetes if a patient is suffering from diabetes you have to control with diet you have to control with the, the drugs and of course the education e for education and exercise so uh, you have to properly educate and properly exercise you have to control this uh, disease called angina so uh, that's all for the uh, today's lecture uh, in the angina ischemic heart disease we have today discussed angina today and in the next lecture we will taking the myocardial infarction the other disease of the heart and that's all for the today's class uh, thank you have a nice day